Well, hello friends, and welcome back to Browser Hacking. Today, we are gonna take a look at garbage collection in the browser. And um, I would like to add a few things. The first one is a way to uh, trigger a garbage collection somehow from the user interface here, um, just for debugging purposes, really. So probably we'll just add a menu item for it. And I would also like to um, print out some kind of report when we do a garbage collection to say um, how much how much on the JavaScript heap is still alive, right? And how much were we able to free? So uh, I don't we can't really print that after every garbage collection because that would just get really noisy if you're doing if you're viewing some content that GCs a lot. But if you do like um like a manual garbage collection, it would be kind of cool if you could see that. And maybe it would be nice if you could see somewhere in the user interface. Um, like the current size of the JavaScript heap, I'm not sure. But um, we'll be starting with, with just adding some UI to, um, to uh, trigger a garbage collection. <clears throat> so that will go in browser tab, I guess. This is where we do the menus. <clears throat> so the debug menu, we'll just put it under these dump things. So dump history. And then we'll put, maybe we'll put garbage collection at the very bottom, actually. Uh, debug menu, add, a, add separator. Uh, debug menu, add action. Um, create, collect garbage. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, apt name for that. And, um, then what are we going to do here? I guess, mm, so browser browser currently supports two types of web views, person in process web view and an out of process web view. And um, today we'll, we'll only do this for the in process web view today. Um, and we'll leave the multi-process thing as a to do. So. Here, what we got to do is just find the document and then document interpreter heap collect garbage. There we go. And maybe we should have a way to tell it that we want a report at the end. So let's see. So we have a collection type. There are two collection types. There's collect garbage and collect everything. Um, collect garbage is a normal collection, and collect everything is a special one that we use um, during virtual or JavaScript VM destruction to make sure that everything gets cleaned up. And it's mostly useful for just testing that we're not leaking stuff uh, because it allows you to run tests against the engine and say, at the end you just say collect everything and then if anything remains then that's something that we were not tracking correctly. Um, but the normal mode is collect garbage. So I think we'll add, add an argument here. Um, you know like print report or whatever. Uh, and that will be default false. And then uh, oops, here we'll say uh, JS heap collection type collect garbage true print the report please okay and then what do we do uh, when we print that report collect garbage okay hmm well I haven't looked at this in a while Okay, so garbage collection, uh, when I first wrote it, it was it was kind of complex, and then it, it got simplified over time because I started out too, too wide and too advanced and um, did a bunch of things that were not necessary. So basically the way it works now is uh, we figure out all of the uh, root pointers that we can. So like um, that's like any pointer that we have lying around, like... Um, everything that we have on the stack that looks like a pointer, um, any handles we have, and 
any interpreters that are going, things like that, whatever's on the call stack. Those are all roots. And then we um, spread out and walk the object graph from these roots and figure out all of the cells. Uh, one cell is one um, unit of JavaScript heap memory. And then at the very end, we walk all of our cells and whichever ones are not marked as live cells, we discard. So I guess sweep is where we can really do the report. So we'll pass print report along to the sweep. And let's see, sweep dead cells. Oh, print report. Mm hmm Okay. So this is what it looks like when we do the sweep. Um, we walk all of our heap blocks, and for every cell in every block, we check if that cell is currently live, uh, but it is not marked. That means that it's no longer used. That means that we deallocate it. So this is where we would print um, this, we would tally this up as a freed cell. So I guess um, deallocated cells, um, live cells. Okay. So yeah, if the cell is live, then um, we'll go here. So deallocated cells. Live cells. Block has live cells. Mm, right. Okay. So then, if a block, if at the end of a iterating over an entire heap block, we find that that block had not a single live cell in it, then we append it to the this vector here of empty blocks, and then at the end of sweep we deallocate those entire blocks. And this is actually when memory actually gets returned to the operating system, because if there is, um, you, if you allocate um, a single cell, it will pin that entire heap block in memory because, um, because of that single cell. So it's only when a, when a block is completely empty that we actually return that memory to the OS. Um, so, I guess we could also here log how many blocks we've freed, although that's more of a, um, we already know like empty blocks, how many were in there. So here, let's say, <clears throat> if print report, um, okay, so garbage collection <clears throat> report. Um, maybe we'll do some <laughs> fancy lines like that. Um, okay, and then, so what did we have? We have deallocated cells, live cells. Okay, live cells. Um, and deallocated or freed cells, let's say. Or collected. Collected, um, maybe we could even do live and collected like this. Okay, let's do this. Live, collected. Okay, I'm gonna rename that to collected cells. And it would be nice if we could see how much memory this is in bytes as well. So, live cell bytes. Like that. Um, collective cell bytes. All right. Um, yeah, so just some more counting action. So the way we know how many bytes um, is that when we count one cell collected, um, we will also increment the collected cell bytes by the cell size of the current block that we're iterating. So block cell size. 
because every block has uniform size cells. Like you, you don't have um, different size cells in the same block. So that's something that makes cell allocation really fast, actually, because then as, as long as you can find a block that has cells in it, you just grab one. Um, you don't need to uh, adjust anything to, to fit your specific allocation size. And here, likewise, live cell bytes, we just add the block cell size. So that's pretty good. Let's see. Let's see what this would look like if we just ran it. It is really warm here today, but I'm going to see if I can make it. <laughs> oh, we messed something up. In tab. All right. So what did I mess up here that I've captured this and I forgot to add a parameter because action callbacks get the action as the parameter here. But we don't need the action for this. Action is mostly useful if you have a checkable action because then you look at the action's check state to see um, how the callback should react, like whether it should turn something on or off. So browse and then we'll do a garbage collection. And it tells us that we have 1,325 live objects of 92,096 bytes. And we collected 195 objects. That's pretty cool. And I guess we should also note uh, how many blocks we have. So let's see. I wonder if I, if I run again, how many will we get? Yeah, so it didn't connect, collect anything the second time. That's normal. So the, this uh, page here, it has a little bit of JavaScript on it. When we um, open it up, it has welcome JS. Uh, let's see if we can open it like that. That didn't work out at all. What the heck? Um, oh, right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's some, some trouble with um, switching pages when we're using JavaScript. It's a separate issue, but I need to work on that at some point. Anyway. Um, let's see what that script actually does. Uh, rest, HTML, misc, welcome, JS. Okay, yeah, so th this is the entire thing. It's just um, when uh, the page loads, then it sets a specific um, element in our HTML to the user agent string of the browser, and that's how we get the user agent to show up here. This user agent, by the way, I really like it. It's uh, very, very nice. Okay, so anyway, um, I wanted to add some more stats. And I should probably grow these lines a little bit, make some space. Okay, um, so these are cells, and let's also do blocks. Um, I've, let's say cells. And um, debug my blocks. That's just m blocks size, and I guess we can call those reclaimed blocks, maybe, or freed, because that's what we do. We free them back to the OS, so. That would be empty blocks size. Those are just pointers, yeah. And oh, I guess we can actually show them byte count in these. So uh, size times heap block block size. Yeah, it's a constant, so that's easy to compute. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, nothing fancy. Actually, let me add a keyboard shortcut for this. Um, like a control alt, control shift G maybe for garbage collect. Maybe just control G. What's control G normally? Is that search next, right? Um, if control G, 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 yeah, let's find next. I don't want to clobber that. Um, so let's do control shift G, but that also feels like a find related shortcut. I don't want to do control alt G because that uh, is a cute even shortcut for keyboard grab. Um, maybe we'll do some like totally unusual one, like um, F9 or something. Um, okay, I'm overthinking this. Let's just go and choosy something. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with mod, control, and key. G? But it, no, I didn't want. Why is this so hard? Control Shift G. That's what I said originally, so let's roll with it. Okay, boom. And look at that. So we can see now um, how many cells? And the blocks. And we have nine live blocks, so we didn't actually, we're not actually able to free any blocks. So let's uh, bring something up that actually does a bit of um, JavaScript business. So what's a good one like that? I guess the um, request animation frame test. So we'll just like keep drawing nonsense rectangles. What happens if I collect garbage. Yeah, then it actually frees some blocks, so that's pretty cool. Because this thing uh, runs JS on a timer. Oops, that's not the source. Um, but it's not a timer, sorry, it's a request animation frame. So uh, in theory, at 60 FPS, it will draw a rectangle every uh, frame. So basically, runs script every frame, so it will produce garbage here. Um, in particular, I guess, here by producing a string because we are not clever enough to um, to realize that this is a string constant and allocate it only once. We'll, we'll, uh, when we evaluate the JavaScript AST, we'll get there and produce a new GC allocated string every time. So that's, there's a lot of opportunities like that for um, optimization in the JS engine for sure. So see, now we collect it again and uh, freed up half a megabyte or 31 heap blocks. So this this will be interesting. Um, maybe we should also include like a little time report. Um, it does feel basically instant, but it still might be fun to see how long it takes to garbage collect, uh, to collect garbage. Um, so let's see, how would we do that? Um, so really we want to start timing here. Mm, maybe we'll have like, um, collection or we'll have some kind of a timer for this. Um, GC stats, or because I don't want to call it, want to call it like the collection timer or something like that, because then it sounds like the timer that we use to do recurring or regular collections. Um, GC timing timer. Gee, uh, why is this so difficult? Measurement collection measurement timer. Start. Um, maybe we even do it this way. Core elapsed timer. I think 
we need to actually include that here before um, a last timer. Okay, and then at the very end here, we'll just pass it along, collection measurement timer. Uh, and then he can continue working with it. So. measurement timer. I don't know, something like that. And here we just need a libcore forwarding header. We don't need to see the class declaration of elapsed timer. Uh, oh, did I not say const? Oh, const, so loud. Um, all right, so here we'll just say how long it took. Time spent. And we should really um, take that here. So um, time spent is um, measurement timer elapsed. MS. Okay. I think that's in milliseconds, right? Well, we should have stronger times, a stronger time related uh, types. This is kind of silly that it's just an, an int that happens to be milliseconds. But we don't have std chrono because we don't use the STL, but we could make something like it. Might be a nice little project. All right, so zero milliseconds, kind of as expected. Um, our, uh, the timers that we use in this system, they run at millisecond, um, the millisecond frequency. So this like the, the shortest time that we can measure is one millisecond. So I actually don't know if, <laughs> if we'll be able to, why is that thing so hard to find? Where the heck, here. Oh, dang it. I really need to work on that issue. Uh, I feel like it's always going to be... Oh yeah, now we got one millisecond. Okay. Maybe if I like bog down the machine a little bit, turn on some fire demo. Um, one millisecond still. Um, okay, well what if I do something really, really, really busy? Can we just spin up? Yes, there we go. 100% CPU usage. Um, let's do a garbage collection. Still one millisecond. It's too fast. <laughs> I guess I have to let it produce some garbage. Um, I could actually help it with that. So, uh, res, misc. Now we're getting serious here. system is under heavy load from my stupid thing. Oh, I forgot about HTML preview <laughs> in the text editor. Oh, that's so funny. I guess we can do it here, but then I don't get the reports. Um, I just wanted to produce garbage. So like, G. Um, oh, dang it. I made it die. <laughs> or wait, what's going on? Hmm, who's asserting here? I guess the text editor. Um, okay, yeah, so the, um, it just got really busy, I guess, because of this thing. Okay, well, system needs a little bit of love in the responsiveness department, but uh, let's edit this, but let's turn off the preview so that I can actually, <laughs> oops. Edit. So I wanted to produce a bunch of garbage, right? So we'll do something like this. Um, X is... Oh, wait. What the actual... Oh, oh that's so annoying. <laughs> this, I really need to fix that issue. It's, it's this issue where... Um, the JavaScript interpreter is tied to the document, 
And it really needs to move out of that and be tied to, um, or really it needs to be persistent. The GC heap needs to be persistent and then um, every window object, every DOM window object should be its own little world that exists in the shared heap and everything. But um, that's a, kind of a big refactor that I keep postponing. Um, but I wanted to make some garbage, so let's, let's do it this way then. Um, Let's do it here. I zero I nine nine plus plus I who is garbage string. Okay, now we'll make nine hundred and ninety nine garbage strings every frame. That should produce a lot of garbage. Um, like a whole bunch. You can see the memory graph here going up. Uh, at a concerning rate, collect garbage, and hmm. Well, I feel like we're not freeing enough of that. Okay, and there we panic, run out of kernel memory. Okay, so it seems like we have some issue here as well. Um, that those um. Strings don't seem to be fully deallocated. What the, what the heck? Um, I wonder why that is. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So sweep dead cells. I guess we can log what we're sweeping here. Just to see that we're actually cleaning up those strings. Yeah, it's freeing all those primitive strings. Just over and over and over, freeing lots of them. So that part makes sense. But then why do we allocate so much? Mm. Primitive string. Has a string in it, sure. Presumably, we are deallocating that string. Um, suspicious. So, if we look at live blocks, we have 10 blocks. It's not so many, but something keeps going up here. Very suspicious. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and suspend the process and then take a look at it in the system monitor see what is going on here what is all that memory and it's all malloc memory all right um i'm thinking that is probably um strings it's like the because I used the, the garb, what did I put in? Garbage string, right? Something like that. Um, garbage string, right? So it's probably all of these. Um, but we're, it looks like we're freeing the GC object, but not, not the string, like the C++ string inside of it. Very suspicious. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see if we're actually running these destructors. Hello. I am prim prim primitive the string. All right. I'm getting very suspicious now. We are running that destructor. Okay. So then we are um, presumably dereferencing 
this. What on earth? Um, what on earth is happening here? Um, let's see. Where we do? Where do we produce the? Um, it will be a literal string literal uh, AST node producing this. So when you execute one of these, then it will create a JS string um, with M value. And that's actually very interesting because we should actually just reuse the, um, this act string here that's stored inside the AST node. Um, so what are these things? Are they actually strings? No, I'm not entirely sure anymore. Maybe they're not strings. Let me test that out with a very hackish test right quick. If we make this string here um, a bit bigger, so it needs more than 32 bytes to store it, we'll see if, oops, um, if the chunked blocks get bigger. Got it? Science. Hmm. Okay. And then we can looky look here, see what we're working with. And I guess I should probably stop that before it gets out of hand. And these are still 32 bytes. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Okay, so I think maybe the way forward here is to um, let's run the profiler on him. See. That's a good, pretty easy way to capture those malloc stacks. Um, oh, then browser. All right. And can we see who's calling malloc? Create string from where? Um, for statement update expression. Wait. What? Two string or symbol? Hmm. Hmm. This is not where I expect it to be, but um, the profiler doesn't usually lie, although it does lie sometimes, but. Um, Hopefully not today. Something is amiss here, or afoot. So this is a suspicious um, to string or symbol. Hmm. As string. So that's a. So we're looking at a JavaScript property name, and we're seeing a lot of mallocs in. Um, the for statements update expressions. That would be like the plus plus i right here. This is um, doing a lot of mallocs. Now that that's not right. Um, so uh, update expression, it will fetch the value of i, and then it will um, will increment it after that. So this is the fetch or the get. So we're doing get on property on the global object in this case, because i is a global, and get on property does this two string or symbol. So let's look at get on property. Two string or symbol. So we are here. Property name is not a number, it's a string i. So we do a shape lookup of the property name to string or symbol. So this thing here should not allocate. That is clearly not helping us, right? Um, why does the string or symbol uh, 
uh, why is this triggering allocation? What is a string or symbol? String or symbol is, um, well, it's a string or symbol, right? Because <laughs> those are the two kinds of property, non-numeric property keys that we have in JavaScript. And immediately this strike, this is, I see that there's something suspicious going on here because notice um, that we are leaking, uh, we are like explicitly leaking this pointer, it's the string that we create here, um, and here as well. And then there's no destructor for this thing. See, that's not right. Um, this thing is leaky, come on. How did we not notice that? <laughs> okay, so the fact that it mallocs is very unfortunate in the first place, but I think we'll leave that as a separate thing. Um, but it, it would be a good performance optimization to get this thing to not malloc at all. But for now, we'll just make it also free. Um, so I think the issue here is that it's a tag pointer, basically. So we're using the um, least significant bit in this pointer field here to say whether it's a string or a symbol, because you can you can use the bottom bits of a pointer uh, normally, because due to um, alignment, um, the bottom bits are guaranteed to be zero in a pointer if you got it from like malloc or something like that. And, and in Serenity, that's a guarantee that we make. So uh, the bottom, bottom bit can be used for encoding data. Um, so what we got to do here is we got to um, work out, wait. So if it's a symbol, we're just keeping it like this. Yeah, this, this is not very nice. Stringer symbol is meant to be a temporary value type, but you're not supposed to store it anywhere. Um, anyway, we'll just say if is string, then um, as, wait, as string. Wait, but can't we just, can't we just, um, do you like this? String impl like that? If you have a string, that's fine. If somebody else owns it. But I guess if you have a constant, do we use that? I guess we're probably using that. Hmm. Yeah, 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 let's use it in a bunch of places. Okay. Um, okay, 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 fine. Let's let's allocate then. But if you're using a string like, mm, okay, I don't want to I don't want to do too much stuff here. So we'll leave this for the future. But let's just make it deallocate at least. Um, static cast string impl m putter wait um, yeah yeah so putter is string and if it's a symbol then the bottom bit needs to make be masked out so here we just do unref and let's uh, actually reinterpret cast. Um, const. Hmm, very silly. So that should make the leaking stop. That's good, fixing a leak. Uh, yeah, we can leave it like that. Detached. Well, it's gonna be okay. Oh, now everything is totally broken. Um, why though? Mm. Oh, wait, 
back up. We need to check for the null state. So is string. Wait, no, it's 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 checking the null state. So why does that crash? Hmm. Did I do something weird here? Um. These are string impulse. And if you're doing it, oh, hmm, this makes me nervous. If you're copying, then we need to ref, ref the incoming string. So if is string, oh, this is so, so gross. Um, but whatever, let's just uh, suffer through it. Ref. Do we have a bunch of other constructor types? And yeah, we got this one right here. Okay. Yep. I do not like this, but we don't want to leak. Libjs. Um. Make string or symbol not leak. Act strings. Strings. Ideally, this thing would not allocate strings at all, but I'll leave that as a separate exercise. Okay, so here we are, and can we run our little thing? So now we should be producing some garbage, I would think. Mm. Wait, are we though? I'm making all of these. Hmm. Wait, is it garbage collecting without me telling it to maybe? Let's say that we always print the report. Print report um, or true, right? Yeah, okay, so it's always collecting because we pass over some threshold, which I guess we could change. Um, it's every 10,000 allocations, so we'll just bump that up to a lot more. Okay, so um, let's see what we want to add here. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty good. coming out. So we'll do thing and look at all of those strings that we collected. 800,000. Pretty cool. And then of course you could do um, a more detailed breakdown of what kind of things are actually live. You do a little report of that and things like that. But I think, I think this is a nice start to this type, type of work. So I'm going to be happy with this for today. It's interesting and we found a, a Pretty bad bugs. I'm glad we did that. The JS. Um, add a way to print um, for um, doing GC with a little debug log report at end. OK. 
can now pass uh, print port true to collect garbage. And it will print out a little summary of time taken. Oh, look at that. 22 milliseconds, 17 milliseconds. So now we can see that uh, time measurement works as well. That's nice. Time taken, time, time spent, and how many live um, collected and uh, counts of live vs collected cells and locks. Then we'll add that browser. Um, add a debug menu item for triggering a garbage JS garbage collection. Uh, using this um, debug menu action, triggering a GC this way will. Uh, print a report at the end, so report afterwards, so you can see how much um, memory is currently used by the JSE. Alright, so I guess that's that. Oh, so nice little, nice little work, fixed a bug, uh, added some statistics, and uh, I don't know what we'll do with this in the future, but uh, it's good to have this type of information available to us for looking into other issues. So this will be the end of today's video. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out, and I hope you saw something interesting, and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.